All right, in problem one, we have that the Gallup poll interviews 1,600 people. Let's go ahead and write n equals 1,600. And of these, 18% say they jog regularly. So our sample proportion is 0.16, or no, 0.18. The news report adds the poll had a margin of error of plus or minus three percentage points at 95% comments interval. So our margin of error is plus or minus 0.03 at 95% confidence. So we could safe, safely conclude that. Okay, so let's remember what um what what the uh, the whole concept behind a confidence interval and a confidence level are. So um when you create a confidence interval, you're sem you're essentially creating a, a a range of values that you think the true population parameter um lies in. Here we're trying to estimate the true population proportion or p of people who jog re regularly. Um, our sample proportion, we got 0.18, but um, you know, we can't just, it, it, we, it's, um, it's, it's, it's unlikely that this will be exactly the true population proportion, but it could be reasonably close. So we create this margin of error as kind of like, you know, giving us a little bit of a buffer zone to where the, where we would think and be like reasonable to think where the population proportion would be. So a margin of error is plus or minus 3% to this value. So that means our confidence interval would then be about 0.15 to about 0.21. So 15% to 21%. And then 95% confidence level says essentially that we're 95% confident that the population proportion lies in here. We're not, we're not certain, but we're pretty, we have, we're pretty strong um, with reasonable data to say that we're almost certain. So A says 95% of all Gallup poll samples like this one give answers within 3% of the true population value. So, so this is probably looks like this is the right, this is gonna be the right answer. This is specific things like like this one within 3% 3, 3 of, of the true population value. So the answer is gonna be A. Well, let me just go through why the other ones are incorrect. So B, the percent of the population who jog is certain to be between 50% and 21%. So we can't say certain because it, 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 we're confident that's in here. But we can't say certain because it could be technically anything. So it's not B. 95% of the population jog between those no, is like, it's trying to trick you. No, nope, that's not what a confidence level or interval means. We can be 95% confident that the sample proportion is captured by the confidence interval. Okay, so this one's trying to trick you by throwing sample proportion. 95% confident that sample proportion is in this interval. We, we're not just 95% confident, we're 100% confident because that's how we made our interval from the sample proportion, which was 0.18. So this is kind of the trick you because um, the 95% confident has to do with the population par parameter or population proportion in this case. So it's not D and E. If Gallup took many samples, 95% would find that it was like, this is interesting. That one's not. That one's not the answer either. Just trying to fool you. Okay, so so A for sure is the answer. All right. Um, two. The weights in pounds of three adult males are 160, 215, and 195. The standard error, error of the mean of these three weights is. Okay, so the standard error, remember, is an estimate for the population standard deviation, and there is a formula. Um, for it, obviously, and it'll be it'll be kind of like in your formula sheet. It just won't be in this straight up form, so you kind of just have to not interpret it. So the standard error of the sample mean of these weights would be equal to the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So let's find what the standard what the sample standard deviation would be for these three values. And we can just let's we could just use our calculator to do this, do the work for us. As you should. So we're gonna go set, edit. That's three, one ninety, two fifteen, one ninety five, and that should not be one ninety, I, I mean one sixty. 160, 215, 
and run the one variable statistics by going to calc, one variable stats for the data in list three. And bang. Now you see there's two values we get here. We get standard, standard deviation with the S, sample standard deviation, 27.84. And we get the population standard deviation of 22.74. Now, which one do we use? Well, remember um, what, what, what's going on here. So me, give me, let me, let me calculate. Oh no, I left, left the list. Let me go back to it. So, so one variable statistics. Now remember, um, we're, 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 our standard error will be the sample standard deviation. So in this case, we're gonna use the 27.84, not the, not the sigma sub x, not the 22.73. So we're in 22 point or 27.84, we're gonna do divided by the square root of n or the square root of three. And that'll be our standard error, which is about 16.07. So let me just write it out here so you can see it. Whoops, 16.07. All right, so the answer will be D. All right, number three. Move this up. Do -do -do. All right, I'm preparing to construct a one sample T interval for a population mean. Suppose we are not sure if the population distribution is normal. Which of the following circumstances will we not be safe constructing an interval based on a simple random sample of size 24 population? Okay, so if you remember um, some of the concepts behind this is that we wanna basically have reasonable evidence, but to say that it looks like we can, um, rationally say like, yeah, the population distribution is probably gonna be about normal. So we wanna inspect the sample data and we wanna make sure there are no strong outliers or extreme skewness. That's essentially what we don't want. Um, so the stem plot is roughly bell-shaped, that would be okay. A histogram of the data shows slight skewness. Slight skewness is okay. A box plot of the data has a large outlier. Okay, so we don't want a large outlier. That's, that's nope, we don't want that. So your answer is gonna be C, because that's not gonna allow us to be, you know, to have, you know, reasonable evidence to say like, yeah, the population could be approximately normal based on this sample data. Okay, so um, answer C, so let's look at number four now. So it jumps to that second part, but let's look at this break it up. So 8.4, many television viewers. Try to zoom out. But anyways, many television viewers express doubts about the very valid validity of certain commercials in an attempt to answer their critics. Timex Group USA wishes to estimate the proportion of consumers who believe what is shown in Timex television commercials. Let P represent the true proportion of consumers who believe what is shown in Timex television commercials. What is the smallest number of consumers that Timex can survey to guarantee a margin of error of 0.05 or less at 99% confidence level? Okay, so let's, let's remember what our, how our confidence interval works. We start from our point estimate or P hat if we're estimating population proportion. And to that, we add Z star times our standard deviation, which is gonna be P hat times one minus p hat over n. And this is gonna be our margin of error. That's how we determine our margin of error. So you wanna calculate what this would be at 99% confidence level. So we wanna make this basically 0 0.05 or less. So let's set this equal to 0.05 and we wanna solve for, solve for n. So we need to find a value for Z star, and that's gonna to have to do with the 99% confidence level. So we look at our um, table A, and we wanna look for where we have 1% left over or half a percentile left and right. 
So let me draw a picture of any other refresher. We have, we have a 99% confidence level or confidence interval. It means 99% of the data is in the middle. And then 1% is left over or 0.05% or half a percent or 0 0.005 of the area will be on both sides. Yes, because again, 0.99 is areas in the middle. So we looked at our table A. We looked at the interior to the valley that has the closest to 0 0.005. Let's see what we get. Mm -hmm. Point. Yeah, it'll be that would be over here. So we got the the point oh five one and point oh oh four nine. And we're gonna be conservative, so we'll use, we're gonna use this one. And that will line up to a Z star of negative two point five seven or two point five seven. So Z star will be two point five seven about. P hat, we're not given a P hat, so we're gonna be conservative and use P hat to be point, point 0.5. And so we set up our margin of error as being equal to 2.57 multiplied by the square root of 0.5 times one minus 0.5, which is just gonna be 0.5 again, all over N. So we need to solve this. And hopefully this isn't the hard part. Sometimes I'll have students that, that struggle with this um, just because of the algebra. But there's a couple ways to do this. Um, oh yeah, let's make, the, let's make the margin of error 0.05. So we'll divide both sides by 2.57. So we're gonna have 0.05 divided by 2.57 will be equal to the square root of 0.5 times 0.5, which will be 0.25 over N. Now undo the square root by squaring both sides. The square root on the right will go away. And then you'll be left with 0 0.05 over 2.57. So second power being equal to 0 0.25 over N. Oops. And now what we can do is multiply both sides by N or N over one you can think of. That will cancel that. And then we just divide both sides by this quantity here. And that'll make that go away. So we'll have N is equal to 0.25 all over 0.05 over 0.257 squared. And we just calculate what this would be. Approximately, we can use our calculator, of course. And you will get, see what I got. Got about 660 points, that's 660.49 for N. Hope I didn't mess up on my, anything. So the closest value is 660.49. So this is kind of one of those trick ones. It's not gonna be C, even though 650 is closer to 660.49. And that's because um, we have to make sure we can guarantee that we'll get um, a margin of error of no more than this. And the only way to guarantee that is to have 
values greater than this or at the minimum this. So even though, again, our sample size is 660 or n is 660.5, we can't have any values lower than this. So the next closest one above it will be, will be um, D or 700. So the answer then is 700.